Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk a bit about R and R Studio. I'm going to demonstrate some basics of using R and R Studio. Now, this is kind of related to the material in R Worksheet 1. However, I won't be going through R Worksheet 1 exercise by exercise in this video. That's something for you to do. Remember also that there are R troubleshooting drop-in sessions in weeks 2 and 3. And so if you find you get totally stuck on this R worksheet, uh, you should go to one of those troubleshooting drop-in sessions where you can get help from an R expert. Just before we start, let's remind ourselves of some terminology. R, the letter R, is a programming language. It's a way to write instructions that a computer understands. And R is particularly well suited to lots of things in statistics. Uh, if you do more statistics courses at the university, you'll use R in lots of those. R is used a lot in research, in academia, and it's increasingly used a lot in industry. And learning R is an important part of this module and other modules. R Studio is a computer program uh, that is convenient if you want to use the R programming language. If you use the R programming language through the computer program R Studio, that will be very convenient. And that's the way that I'm recommending you use R, that you use it through the program R Studio. So I'm going to start by assuming you're at a computer where R, the programming language, is installed, and R Studio, the computer program, is installed. Uh, this might be, for example, because you're using a university computer, which should all have both of those installed. Uh, it may be that you're, you've installed them on your own computer. Uh, if you've tried to do that but had difficulty, then the troubleshooting drop-in sessions in week two is another place to ask for help with installing these programs. I also listed some other ways that you could use R and R Studio, such as the R Studio Cloud uh, in the notes. You might want to look at those. So uh, on my computer, I have just opened R Studio. And it looks like this. And when you use R Studio, it will probably look something similar to this. So you'll notice that in the left-hand column, uh, I have uh, three tabs called Console, Terminal, Jobs. But Console is the only one we will need. And Console is the main place that we will interact with R, the programming language. Over here, uh, we have a bunch of tabs in the top right, like Environment, History, Connections, Tutorial. Uh, we won't really use those very much. Those can mostly be ignored. And then we also have uh, this thing down in the right-hand corner. At the moment, it's open on a file reader. It's open on my Math 1710 folder, where I save things for Math 1710. Later on, uh, we'll use other tabs here, in particular plots. Later on when we draw graphs and plots, they will appear there. But for the moment, we don't need the bottom right either. For the moment, we're going to be dealing with this left-hand console. And the console is where we uh, type things that we want R to do for us. So, For example, if we want to know what uh, 7 times 9 is, can type here 7 times the asterisk is used for times 9 and then we press enter and we get the answer 63 which is what 7 times 9 is so R has calculated that correctly. Notice that we type things in next to uh, this kind of pointed arrow when R gave us the answer it put a 1 in brackets next to it that one in brackets just tells us it's the first part of the answer. We are, our answer is 63, it only has one part. But later on, if you get R to give you back very long vectors or big tables, it's useful to know like which is the fourth column or which is the twelfth entry. But obviously, the first entry of our answer is 63, so we can kind of ignore that, that one in brackets. We can do other things here if you want to know what 2 plus 3 uh, divided by 7 is, uh, we can do that uh, as well. We've done 2 plus 3 divided by 7. 
and so on by typing commands into the R console will run them for us. And there we're kind of using R like a calculator. Now the real power from using R uh, is if we use objects in R, which is when we don't just deal with numbers, but we uh, have an object, we call it. So for example, if we want to create an object called answer, and give that the value of seven times nine, we do that here. If we press enter, nothing happens. So you might have noticed that in the environment tab up there in the top right, it's told us that we've stored something called answer and we've given it the value uh, 63. So this line here, answer arrows, and the arrow is created with a less than followed by a dash, seven times nine, means calculate seven times nine and assign it to an object called answer. And then if I want to uh, find out what the object answer is, I can either look in the environment tab in the top right, or I can type answer, enter. Uh, but I can do lots of other things. If I want an object called new answer, I want that to be the previous answer times two, I can do that that way. So new answer is old answer times two, and that has created an object new answer whose value is twice the old answer object. Note that I didn't have to type in the number 63 for answer, but rather I multiplied this object that I already had. You can also do slightly uh, wacky seeming things like assign an object in terms of itself. So if I decide that new answer was actually too small and I want to increase it by eight, then I can set new answer to be new answer plus eight. And so I've defined it in terms of itself. It might seem a bit weird to mathematicians, but that's a thing that's very useful in programming. R also has various functions built in, as well as just plus, minus, and times that we've seen. Uh, there are also functions like log for logarithms. For example, if we want to know what the natural logarithm of 8 is, we press log 8 with the argument in brackets. It tells us it's 2.07. We can also find, say, the log of one of our objects we've saved, the log of the object called answer is log answer. That's 4.1 and a bit. Uh, some functions that you'll probably find useful are the round and signif functions. Round rounds a number to a certain number of decimal places, and signif rounds something to a number of significant figures, because you perhaps don't want all the decimal places you've been given. So if you want log answer to say three decimal places, we do round log answer, then a comma, and then we say how many digits we want. Let's say we want three decimal places. We write it uh, with digits equals three down there. And it gives us 4.143, just the three decimal places. Signif works in a similar way. So uh, on our worksheet one, you'll look at various ways of assigning objects and using functions, and you can work through those yourself to learn how to use them. There's also the worksheet talks about saving your work, which is important. Obviously, I've calculated all these numbers. I don't want them to just disappear, especially if I can't finish the worksheet all at once. We can uh, save our work by starting an R script. Uh, you probably won't be able to see me doing this, but I'm going to file, new file, R script is what I'm clicking on here, although you can't see it on the video. And when I click on that, it creates me this kind of notepad area at the top. You can see I've still got the console here down the bottom, but I now have this notepad area. And if I ran a command I particularly liked, and I set answer equals 7.9, I can put that up here in my R script and save it for later. I also liked when I calculated the logarithm of it to three decimal places. 
And then I can save that work by clicking on this save. Yeah. Uh, you probably can't see this again, but uh, a, a file browser has come up so I can save this work where I want to. I'm calling it uh, mywork.r, and now you can see the file name up there. In the top left, it's called mywork.r, and R scripts are traditionally saved with the suffix .r. Uh, but these commands, like if I come back to this in a week's time, uh, I probably won't remember what this all this is. So it's helpful to annotate this with things that explain to you what it means, which we do by putting a, a hash sign in there. So the hash sign tells us that this is a comment that shouldn't be run as a command. So I'm going to write, this is me trying out our commands for a video. And maybe I'll put a comment next to this uh, to say, this rounds the log to three decimal places. And the usefulness of these comments uh, is that it reminds me what it does. If I want to run one of these commands again, I can highlight them and then press the run button uh, in the kind of top of uh, the notepad area. If I press run, the command magically appears down here. The good thing about putting commands with a hash sign is that R will ignore them. If I accidentally highlight all that, including the comment, and click Run, it still works fine in R down in the console, as R has ignored my comments that say, this rounds the log for three decimal places. So I'm going to save that again with the comments in. Some of the later exercises on the first worksheet will ask you to create your own R script like this. Obviously, that's just uh, a very brief introduction to using uh, our studio and the worksheet will go through this in more detail and then you can get more help in your drop-in sessions when they occur in weeks two and three.